Eric, and the, is that what, one thing I think is a positive thing where I'm getting, I was trying, this is a positive plan, and when man is in harmony with the divine principles. Now, at University of Pittsburgh now is uh, using DNA, taking cells from our body, culturing the cells and making uh, a material that they were able to, from the bladder, they were able to, to, they're on the verge of being able to create a replaceable part. And that's a divine law, using that, that, that where they be able to replace somebody who has a bladder condition with a bladder from their DNA and cellular structure and using three-dimensional three copying, produce a bladder. And they're gonna, I think we're about 10 years off where we'll, if you need a new bladder, you'll be able to replace it. Okay. And I say that's a divine harmony. This is where science is doing that, a great you, service. That, that's fine. But you know what? That's no different than the blood clotting cascade. That's right. But it's, it's no it's, different it's, than the body heals itself. I mean, how does that happen? I mean, what, it's the same thing. That's why I think the handshake between science and spirituality yeah. is, is fabulous. Because, <coughs> and, and then... Okay. Million. Did, um, that does, if I recall right, Genesis teaches that God created the male human first. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and then some time passed, a little bit of time or whatever. Yeah. Some time, and then he thought man needs a companion. Right. Did, did, did he have the same thoughts regarding the apes and the tigers and the skunks? That, that they needed a companion too? Or Maybe, did he I give them? Know. It's not specified. Did he, did he make them? of two sexes to start with? Well, first of all, uh, did he make them two sexes? I don't know. He didn't say. Well, the her did, hermetics say there was a the principle of gender. When he made, when he made Adam, did, did Adam have testicles? I would say yes. Even though no females existed, he had testicles that created sperm cells with, with half of the DNA. I would guess he did, but I can't tell you for sure. <laughs> Is well, it wasn't there. Is there. Is he, he, he there? But you should have a logical explanation. I don't have a logical explanation. It's not important. Is well, it but that evolution that? has a logical explanation. As evolution is not logical, Bill. You are in some kind of, and you want to make your presentation about logic and evolution? Put it together. Give me a call. We'll do it. Okay? Isn't that science that as we are come out from, from, from our first existence as an egg and a, and a sperm, when we are made, we are all made female first, and then the X chromosome either kicks in if it's there or doesn't, and we either stay female or become male. Yeah. Check that out. Yeah. We That's are in we hey, look, there's our we look, were, if you we want to, if you want to discuss, both, if you want to stand up and present the logic and the reasoning of microevolution, <coughs> be my guest. Yeah. Well, Jim Warren did, and he, all he did was regurgitate the stuff he learned in a, a book or something. It had no proof of macroevolution. And I, I went through two series of showing how it's not proof of anything. But if you think you got proof of evolution, I'd like to hear you say We were discussing the logical consistency of the theory of evolution. That's what I'm talking about, and that's what's lacking in your trying to right, okay, let me ask you this. evolution. Let me, let me ask you don't this. have a logical consistency in okay. your story. Is it, is it not true that natural selection uh, operates on uh, random mutations to cause positive beneficial mutations that cause an increase in the genome, and we move up the scale and get better and better? Is that basically what evolution says? No, I believe yes. evolution is the fact that uh, whatever the organism is takes advantage of whatever is right. available to it. Survival them. of the fittest. But I'm talking about how does how does a bacteria become a human over billions of years without increasing the <coughs> genome? And I'm asking you, can you give me an example? Listen to me with all your science and all your reason and logic. Give me an example of a beneficial mutation that added information to the genetic structure and made the uh, DNA marker. It doesn't exist, because that's, but that's the key linchpin of macroevolution. Nobody's seen it, nobody can even tell you how it happens. I don't think that's right. Well, I, I'll, I'll give you the same, we you went from, all your evidence of the we truth. We went from <coughs> single cellular <coughs> organisms to Good. multicellular. You what? We went from single cellular to multicellular. Sure that's did. how it happened. Yeah, single cellular to 100 trillion. Slowly with forms like the sponge. You know, a sponge has very identical cells all over the place. What's but that point? What's that point? That it was one step at a time. 
that sponges could have. But I just told you that, that nobody, could, nobody has ever shown in science where a beneficial mutation that benefited the organism, okay, increased the genome. It doesn't exist, it never has. It is the big major problem with evolution, but scientists ignore it. They say, oh, what happened? They don't have any I don't know what you mean by increase the genome. Increase right. the complexity? A bacteria. A human a bacteria has about 4 million base pairs. A human has 3.5 billion. To go from one cell animal to a human being, there's all kinds of increase in biological information. By way of such things as sponges, and from there on. Whatever, I'm just saying, just name me one. I don't care. You're going to have to have billions and billions and billions of them, but you can't name me one. That's my point. Well, I just named sponges. That, that, that Bill, can... Bill, I'm telling you to give me an example of a beneficial mutation that added to the genome, to add it to the size of the DNA. That's all I said. And that's what has to happen for us to go from one cell to 100 trillion cells. And the DNA is the size of ours. It has to happen. And nobody would just, you can't argue that. I mean, evolutionists will not argue that that it doesn't have to happen. It actually doesn't have to be beneficial. It just has to not be harmful. That if it's not result. beneficial, then it's going to lose, it's, it's going to go out, out of the life because no it can't so survive. Than the others. It doesn't have to be beneficial. It has to be no worse than so that it doesn't all, die out. Hey, it could be evil. All, all neutral it could be and evil. harmful. Not all mutations create, I could be, hey. some mutations you get born with six fingers. But that doesn't mean. That was a loss of genetic information that caused that, not a gain. It doesn't mean it's an improvement, but it doesn't mean you're going to die earlier either. It's all about survival of the fittest. If you're more fit, you're going to live. That's an evolutionary theory. My point is this, is that you, you have, <laughs> All neutral and non-harmful or harmful mutations do not add information to genome. You lose it. Even beneficial ones are a loss of genetic. Study it. I mean, you don't have to. You ignore me and, and going about your way and argue with me next time about it, but I've studied it. And nobody can come up with Tim didn't come up with one. We, we agree. We do have random mutations. Agree with that. Well, certainly. Well, why isn't isn't Random mutation contradictory to intelligent design? <laughs> if it's an intelligent design, why do we have mutations? Well, okay, first of all, why, why first of all, let me ask you something. What does mutation act upon? Did you know? And that's intelligent design. I mean, but you can't. You, I mean, it's random. Random mutations happen. Yes. I think if if you design something. An intelligent designer designs. Oh, here we go again. It's got to be perfect, right? How many times do we have to explain this to you? Yeah. Good. If you were perfect, you'd never die. If you never died, you'd never need redemption from your sins. I need redemption. Well, I know that's how you feel. I, I mean, I disagree with you, but I, you have a right to feel that way. So well, I'm if, but your source isn't a science book. No, it's not. It but whenever that source speaks on science, it's right. Say I said, whenever the source, the Bible, speaks on science, it's correct. And I've already been, I've been through it. Have you been here every time? Well, you got your ears and eyes shut? No, I want you to prove it. You got enough proof for that. I'm just saying that <coughs> the Bible statements on science are consistent with science as we know it. Yes. True science. The Bible.